Good morning, everybody. My name is Stephanie Canist. I'm the director here at Dodge County Head Start. I wanted to take a few minutes to let parents know, um, besides the welcome, welcome to the school year, but I wanted to let parents know what we've been doing in order to keep students and staff safe here at Head Start. It's going to be a little bit of a different year. We've implemented safety precautions and procedures and we just want to give you a heads up, show you ahead of time how this is going to work. For those of you who are returning to school here, this is going to be a bit different. Uh, but again, we've designed these policies and procedures to make sure that your students are going to be safe at all times and that we can provide in-person instruction here at school. One of the first procedures or policies that what I, I want to talk about is of course you notice I have put my mask on. So while we're in the building and unable to social distance, all staff will be wearing masks. At this time, we're not requiring children to wear masks unless they are riding the bus. So that's our first new policy and procedure. The second thing that I want to talk about is our daily child COVID-19 symptom screener. It's going to be very important this school year that you not send your child to school when they are sick or feeling ill, especially with COVID-19 symptoms. So one of the first new policies and procedures that we've implemented is the daily child symptom screener. I wanna also point out that we're doing this for staff as well. So I'm gonna walk you through this. You'll be receiving a link in order to fill out the child symptom screener and you'll need to do that every day before your child attends school. So I'm going to walk you through that. Once you click on the link, you're going to be asked, if I can get it to work here, you're going to be asked to fill this out every day. Again, you're going to want to enter your email address. You're going to want to click on today's date. Fill in your child's name and then your name, the name of the person completing the screener. Then you'll answer the questions. So the first question, my child has had a 100.4 fever or above within the past 24 hours. The second question, you're going to check any of the following symptoms that your child has been displaying in the past 24 hours. If none of the symptoms apply, check none of the above. The next question, my child has had a pain reliever fever reducer, such as Tylenol or Motrin, within the past 24 hours. If you answered yes to that question, you'll need to provide an answer as to why. The last question, my child, myself, or someone in my family has been in close contact with someone diagnosed with COVID-19 or suspected to have COVID-19. Yes, no, or maybe. And so, if you answered no or none of the above to all the screener questions, your child may be able to attend Head Start today. If you answered yes or maybe to any of the screener questions and or checked any of the symptoms above, you'll need to call the center for further instructions. Once you've completed the symptom screener, you'll be able to drop off your child for the day. That's the next area where we've changed some of our policies and procedures. One of the first new important policies and procedures and changes that we've made here at Head Start is our child drop-off procedure. In the morning, once you've completed the daily child symptom screener, you'll drop your child off at the front of the Head Start building. Please pull into the parking lot and follow the arrows as marked. You'll wait your turn in your car and pull up to the designated staff member. Once the designated, once you've pulled up into the, the spot and it's your turn, a staff member will check your child's temperature with a contactless thermometer. If you need to at that time, you can get out of the car and help unbuckle your child. Once your child's unbuckled and on the sidewalk, you'll hand your child off to the staff person that's waiting. Please say your goodbyes at this point. Your child will be walked by a staff member 
to the outside classroom door. As you can see, we've implemented a barrier system along the, the route that your child will be taking. Children will walk to their designated classroom and be dropped off there by a waiting staff. Once your child is received at the classroom, the waiting staff person will check the child in and the child will place their things in an individual cubby. At this point, your child will be directed to the hand sink where he or she will begin our hand washing procedure. We've installed touchless faucets, soap dispensers, and towel dispensers as another safety precaution this year. As you can see, this child is wearing a mask. Masks are optional for children at this point unless they're riding the bus, but if you feel more comfortable, do send your child in a mask. Once the school day is over, pickup procedures will follow much the same as drop-off. Your child will prepare in the classroom for the end of the day, grab their things out of their cubby, and be released at the outside classroom door to an awaiting staff person, where that person will walk the child up to you in your vehicle as you're waiting. Again, at drop-off procedure, you're gonna to wanna to pull into the parking lot at your designated time, wait in your car, and wait your turn. Before your child is released, staff will verify that the person picking up the child is indeed on the child's emergency contact and release list. That will be done even before your child is brought from the classroom. Once your child arrives up front, the adult will be asked to sign the child out using an iPad. The iPad will be cleaned and sanitized in between each individual. Once you receive your child, you may exit your vehicle and help your child buckle up if necessary. Once that's finished, your child's buckled up, you can exit the parking lot, again following the designated route. Couple of things to note. Please make sure that any individual picking up your child is on your emergency contact and release list. And also that that person is aware of the drop-off and pick-up procedures. It'll also be helpful if you try and have the same person pick up your child every day, and also if you place your child's car seat on the passenger side of the vehicle so that it's closest to the building. 